Are you wondering what causes iron levels to be high? Maybe you're told you have high, high iron and you don't really know what that means. There are different ways to measure iron and so we're going to talk about a little bit of that information in this video. My name is Dr. Taranella and if you're curious about the causes of high iron and some of the things you should be thinking about when this comes up in your health scenario, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. Okay, so what causes iron levels to be high? So first, let's define a little bit what we mean by iron levels to begin with, because there's a few different ways that people talk about iron and iron levels. Uh, so one way we can measure iron is through serum iron. So this is just kind of what's floating around in your blood. And then, um, and, you know, it's more free and ready to be used. Then there's also this other form called stored iron called ferritin and that's more of as it sounds a storage form of iron. And then there's a there's another way that's kind of more of a surrogate marker for iron. It's not actually iron but it contains iron and that's hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is uh, a molecule that helps your body transport uh, oxygen and in order to make hemoglobin you need iron so iron is a core part of that and so oftentimes when we say you know iron and hemoglobin they're used interchangeably but for this uh for this uh video we're going to exclude hemoglobin as part of the uh the idea of what we're talking about as high iron so we're talking about high serum iron and high ferritin now and specifically we're, we're going to look more so at the ferritin and it's important to know too that there's different uh levels that are normal for uh for iron levels for males and females and for ferritin uh for females the range goes from about 11 to 200 or 230 and for males it goes from about 25 to 500 now that's a big range and so when we talk about high iron iron levels you know there's sort of two, two ways to think about this and you know the uh, two ways to think about it is like extremely high iron like above the normal range and then there's um you know optimal ranges so you know for the purpose of this we're going to be talking about both of those um and uh you know, if you have a ferritin level and you're a female above 200, I would say that's, you know, pretty high. And you sh there are a few things you should be thinking about for that. And they're not too much different for the male. So for a male, if they have a ferritin that's above 500, you know, there are a few things you should be thinking about. So one of those things is uh, called hemochromatosis. So hemochromatosis is an abnormal absorption of iron through the digestive tract. And when you when that happens, you tend to accumulate more iron. Uh, for females, this probably is not going to happen if you're having normal menstrual cycles, um, but it still can. It's just more uh, more common when you go th after you go through menopause for this to to creep up. Uh, for males, it can ha it can show up, you know, in in your mid to to later years um, because it does take a while for it to build up. So. Um, you know, anything over 500 is uh, considered, you know, somewhat problematic. Usually when you have hemochromatosis, you have extremely high numbers, but sometimes it won't show up right away. So it really depends on, you know, several different things like sp your specific genetics. So there's several different uh, gene alterations that will cause this uh, iron to absorb. If you're doing any kind of blood donations that will mitigate the risk um, for both males and females. And, uh, 
you know, your diet is going to play a big role too. So there's iron's only in certain uh, certain things. Main source of iron that we get is called heme iron, and that's coming from the hemoglobin or blood of animals. So if you're eating animal products, you're getting some iron. Uh, if you're not, then you know you're getting a little bit. But depending on you know how well you, how well you absorb it, uh, you probably won't get high iron if you're not consuming animal products. Okay, so just to summarize, we talked about two main uh, reasons that people can get high iron. One is through you know dietary consumption of high iron containing foods, but Usually you have to have some genetics in favor of absorbing iron, like, you know, this hemochro these hemochromatosis uh, gene alterations that can do that. Uh, so you don't have to have, um, you know, a diagnosis of hemochromatosis to have a tendency towards that. And, you know, the uh, genetics around that, uh, maybe we'll save for another video if people are interested in this, but... Uh, uh, when you go see a, a hematologist, a blood specialist, uh, because you have super high iron levels, uh, it's usually, you know, depending on how high it is, that, you know, will sort of dictate uh, whether or not they diagnose you with hemochromatosis. Um, but there is, there has to be some kind of genetic component to that as well. And there's, so there's different combinations you can have to get that uh, diagnosis, some more common. So there's both the, the genetics and then the uh, uh, diet in summary. Um, there is another reason that uh, people can have high iron or high ferritin, uh, and that has to do with inflammation. So it's uh, what happens in this phenomenon is called an anemia of chronic disease. Uh, so what happens is your red blood cells actually come down and you become anemic because your body is sequestering or storing all of your ferritin. So if you have a high ferritin and you don't know why, it's very important that you, before you start, you know, go donating blood or dumping blood, you have to make sure that your hemoglobin is normal and also that you don't have inflammation because that could be a, a cause for that. Um, but, you know, sometimes uh, high iron can actually cause inflammation in and of itself too. So there's a little bit of a subtlety that you need to be able to um, T's out there with the, usually with the help of your doctor, you can do that. But um, um, yeah, those are the three uh, main causes of high iron, high iron foods, uh, hemochromatosis or genetics uh, favoring that, and then, uh, you know, some sort of anemia of chronic disease or some sort of chronic inflammation, chronic infectious type thing will also do this. All right, so that should give you a better understanding of what causes iron levels to be high and maybe some things to discuss with your doctor on what the best steps will be. Um, if you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.